welcome to Oops! Outrageous, overwhelming possibilities to spread contagious joy. And I'll tell you what, I have my friend Daryl back with me today, and I'll tell you, the stories that you're going to hear are just only God could do, right? It is God. But first, I just want to read something out of the Word that I just thought was so precious today. Um, it's in Psalms 148, and it tells what God does, but praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and lovely. Praise is becoming inappropriate. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. He determines and counts the number of stars. He calls them all by names. Great is our Lord and of a great power. His understanding is inexhaustible and boundless. The Lord lifts up the humble and downtrodden. He casts, he, uh, let's see. The Lord takes pleasure in those who reverently worshipfully, worshipfully fear him and in those who hope in his mercy and loving kindness. And I'll tell you what, uh, you have had the opportunity to bring that part of God, that the God that is so precious, that loves, that knows people by name to all over across the ocean. <laughs> well, Sharon, you know, last week we were talking about how at, at the age of nine, I burnt right. the church down. <laughs> and then God began speaking to me right. in a way that I could hear him and, and he would, I, I mean, because I made a deal with God. Mm -hmm. If he would forgive me, I would do whatever he wanted me to do. And I know your dad very much the right. same way. He, he actually saw angels. God right. spoke with him in a real way. He did. And uh, he, there's a tie there. There's a tie there. He, he actually had visits over a period of a year and a half. There were 27 visits. Nothing that's not in God's Word. Yes. But just illuminating the scriptures of what he's like, the heart, the portrait of the Father heart of God. You know, of loving kindness. We often don't know how to handle, uh, I mean, we believe in angels, we right. believe in the devil and so forth, but we don't, we don't have, in, in America, we just don't have the framework so for that. So you, have you had some... I have, and, and it's, it's, it's you, you know, I, I look back and, and, I, and I think of Mary. She was a young right. mother, and, 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 and she had things happen that had never happened to anybody right. before. And it says that she pondered those things mm -hmm. in her heart. And what that tells me is she kept her mouth shut. Exactly. She didn't know who to tell. <laughs> and when she did, she probably whispered it to him and said, you know, this is what happened. And and I have the same kind of in occurrences in the last few weeks and, and even in years for that matter. But like, for instance, um, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, I was in Montana uh -huh. on a Wednesday evening, uh, Miles, Montana. A young girl comes up to me after I speak and she says, uh, privately, she's not making a big public uh -huh. thing over it. She says, when you were speaking, God has given me a gift and I have a gift of seeing guardian angels. And when you were speaking, I saw more guardian angels standing around you than I have seen around anyone in years. And you really need it, right? <laughs> oh, when we're dealing with kids, we're, we're in a Muslim village. Yes. And though they call themselves a friendship village, I know within the last few months mm -hmm. before we actually came out for a few weeks to do some friend raising in the States, that the um, Pakistani Muslims who were in the country of the Philippines, our island, to do terrorist training camps, they were looking at us, and we have a $2 million price tag on our head as a, as a potential reward for being kidnapped. You're kidding. So for two, the two months before we came back, there were four serious kidnapping attempts, not directed at my wife and I directly, but at other missionaries uh -huh. that are part of our mission. Uh, because the Muslims of the, uh, the village that we live in, we have done so much for them and their children that they honor, protect us, and uh, they love what we're doing. So they the, actually protect That's you right. The Pakistanis were asking questions, <laughs> and finally the Iman, and mm -hmm. in fact from the Sultan down, mm -hmm. they uh, simply say, don't touch Daryl and Sandy. They are doing wow. so much for our people. Don't harm them. And so the Pakistanis <laughs> were said, leave them alone. And they did, and we continue to this day. We still uh -huh. have that same uh, relationship with it. And it, we have a history of good relationships with uh -huh. the Muslims. When my son was 11, and now he's mm -hmm. 31, so this has been a few years, he was walking down the rice paddy with the 
Iman. Who is the basically the that pastor? That same Iman. Yeah. yeah. This is back in Thailand when we were missionaries there for ten years. Yes, you were. Um, <coughs> so my son's walking down the rice paddy, uh, in front of he, he called him his grandpa. And this is the kind of relationship the two had. And an uh, eleven-year-old boy, red-headed, and he loved being out in the country with his Muslim mm -hmm. grandfather. As he's walking down, the Muslim would uh, happen on this one day, looked ahead of Didi, and he said, "Stop, Didi, stop." And Didi stopped said, what, Grandpa? And he said, there, do you see there's a cobra in front of you on the trail? And he was reared up in front of my son, oh. pointed straight at it, and he's weaving there in their strike pose. And uh, so Didi says, I see him. And so uh, our son, whose name is really Darrow, uh, said, Jesus, make him go away. And immediately, it was as if a hand struck the back of the snake, and he went flat down on his stomach, and he wiggled right at my son and crawled between his legs and off into the rice paddy. Oh, my the, the Muslim, Iman, <laughs> looks on and he says, how did you do that? I've never seen anyone do that before. And Didi said, well, I just prayed and asked God to take it away. And he said, why is it that Iman, the Muslim, is asking, yeah. say, why is it that every time I pray to my God, he doesn't answer? And when every time you pray to your God, he does. And my young 11-year-old son says, that's easy, Grandpa. It's because my God is real and yours is not. Wow. Whoa. That's out of the mouth of an 11-year-old. That's exactly oh. right. And they had such a friendship relationship that he took this from a child. And just then, as we prepared to move to the Philippines, mm -hmm. My son, uh, he was approximately 12 years old at that point. He mm -hmm. said to um, the grandpa, he said, I have to go. My family are moving to the Philippines. But he said, when I grow up, I will come back. And I'll probably be bringing my wife with me. Now there's an 11, 12-year-old <laughs> saying this to his, you know, Muslim grandpa friend. <laughs> years passed. When he became 21 years old, he returned with his bride. He got married, by the way, at 18. Uh -huh. That's an interesting story in itself. <laughs> and when he came in, he approached the grandpa's house. His twin sons were outside, and they said, Look, there's Didi. He's returned. Grandpa said this morning he's about time for him to come back. And he had been praying this morning that Didi would come back. Grandpa, here's Didi. Oh, so there was a reunion, and, and Grandpa has an addiction to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And my son was encouraging him to quit for his health mm -hmm. sake, because he's getting up in years. And... Uh, Within the next couple of days, Grandpa's cow, because he's a butcher, and he was hired by the Buddhist who cannot kill because that's sin in Buddhist oh. faith. They can eat it as long as someone else does the sinning. They can eat it. That's Isn't not that no longer something. sin. So anyway, so so Grandpa's cow disappeared. They then spent two or three days looking for it, and it was gone. Now cows that wander away, and this was a hired one for him to butcher, so it was money out uh -huh. of the pocket. Um, don't normally return when they and in this, wow. in this huge city of Bangkok on the outskirts. And so Dee, Dee said, well, Grandpa, I have a deal for you. I'm going to pray, if you want me to, I'll pray and ask God to bring your cow back if you will quit smoking. Grandpa said, okay, it's a deal. So Dee, Dee prays, and he and his wife go out, uh, Dee, Dee and his wife go out, do some grocery shopping. After they come back from grocery shopping, Dee, Dee comes back to the Grandpa's house, and he sees Grandpa is really grouchy. He says, what's wrong, Grandpa? And his son says, tell him, Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa says, my cow came home. <laughs> well, Grandpa, how did your cow come home? The policeman brought it back. Well, why did the policeman bring your cow back? Because they were going to have it for a barbecue. But they got a guilty conscience, and they brought it back. Oh, my goodness. Is there a miracle somewhere That's a miracle, here? miracle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so, anyway. Um, advance it to in Thailand and, and working in amongst in a Muslim village, God is doing phenomenal things. And remember that cobra he encountered on the trail. Right. Well, my son was now 15, 16 years old, and he was coming home in a taxi. As he did, they went over a speed bump. And as he looks back, he sees that they had just ran over an 11, 12 foot long python. Oh, my word. He tells the taxi driver, stop, and he jumps out, and this big red-headed kid goes back, <laughs> and he wrestles with this wild python on the road. 
gets it under control, the taxi driver, he shouts to him, can, do you have anything I can put this thing in, a rice bag, something. <laughs> so that he brings a rice bag and he stuffs it inside and he comes to the house. Now I'm sitting at home, my back is to the door and I'm eating a bowl of noodles with the rest of the family, our two other sons and my wife. My wife's sitting across the table from me and all of a sudden she turns red in the face and she gets her pointer finger out and she says, get that thing out of here. And I'm thinking she's trying to cast out an evil spirit. I mean, that's kind of the, the, what you're getting, the impression of here. And I turn and I see my son exiting the door behind me and this ADD side of me, you know, uh -huh. I, I'm sure that's from childhood still impacts me today and my brain just triggers in and says, wait a minute. Uh, we haven't had a good missionary picture in so long. Wait a minute, sweetheart. Um, can, you, can, well, I'd like to have a picture with you and the snake. And she's saying, no. And I'm saying, please, hon, you know, it'd be so good. The boys are holding, no. I'm saying, hon, it, will, it won't be able to hurt you. I mean, it will just really keep, and, and, she, and she's, no, please. And she finally agrees to it. And I found that picture just this year, and we had never used it in a missionary newsletter. And I, I, when I looked at the picture, I thought, Oh, I see why <laughs> her face was not quite the, you know. And, and so I prepare sermons for kids. And we're, we're, you know, early on in our time in the Philippines, we would do what we called sidewalk Sunday school out on the traffic island in the heart of this town of a million and a half people. Now, mind you, I'm from Idaho. Right. And, uh, and I'm a country boy. <laughs> Village, I mean, towns of big sizes, Boise is crowded for me. Yes. And I always loved being out in the country, hiking and stuff. With ADD, I had no problem entertaining myself, hiking through the woods and, and so forth. But, but so God sends me to this crowded city in the tropical island right on the, near the equator. And so every sermon we preach is not just like a preacher preaching, right. but it's dramatized. So I, I, I'm preaching, I, and, I, and God gives me this message about, about Moses and how that he's put into the Nile River. But before that, you know, we're talking about his life and how that they, they were trying to kill him, the soldiers were. So I get a bunch of the kids and we dress them up as soldiers yes. with little wooden swords. And, <laughs> and, 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 and so we put a real baby in a wicker basket because uh -huh. that's what they hid Moses in. And so when the little kids are going around and they're looking down low for Moses, baby Moses, I'm raising baby Moses up above my head in the basket. And then when they're looking up high, I'm putting him down low. And when they're looking in front, I'm putting him behind and, and so forth. <laughs> And we're having fun with baby Moses. And then we get to the interesting part where <laughs> then his sister puts him in the Nile River. And we have a wild river called the Dabao River. Uh -huh. and, and our kids are saying, what kind of animals are in the, in the da Nile River? You know, think about the Dabao mm -hmm. River. And we have the crocodile farm, which is right adjacent to the, the, the Davao River. And there are often crocodiles who can escape and get into that. <laughs> and um, we have the biggest, as far as I know in the world, biggest crocodile in the world is in our island. And it's, yes, it is a man eater. Okay. Wow. So, so when the mm -hmm. kids come out with the word crocodile, my son, who works at the crocodile farm, releases a five-foot crocodile from under the curtain behind me, and it comes waddling out on the stage, oh my out goodness. in public. The kids screaming. That's right. And, <laughs> and, and somebody says, well, wasn't it dangerous? I said, yeah, we had our two nurses out on the corner of the stage. But <laughs> honestly, they ran away faster than the kids did. <laughs> we recovered the crocodile, put it back away. Nobody was hurt. All right. So anyway, now, two weeks later, I have another sermon prepared. And it's about Moses when he grows up and uh -huh. he's got this long got stick this in his hand and he throws <laughs> it down and I throw the stick down and he did it in front of Pharaoh and I'm doing it on the stage uh -huh. and I said, kids, what did it become? And they say, a snake. That's right. And <laughs> what happens? Well, remember that snake that was yes. uh, ran over? It was not injured. He had already sold it to the pet store, but he, he went and borrowed it back from <laughs> them. And so out comes slithering this 11 foot snake. Now, this is excitement. You know, we've got these headset mics on. Normally, you can hear us about two blocks radius around. This day, something special happened. As the 11 foot python comes crawling out, I don't really think about this in advance, but you don't really tame snakes. And as it comes out, this, the two nurses are exiting the scene really quick and the kids are backing up because it sees freedom. It goes off and over the stage and it is getting out of here. Oh As it's way. halfway off the stage, my little translator, Noel, he thinks to himself, Uncle Daryl, I gotta help Uncle Daryl. This is a lot of money that's getting away and I know that he doesn't want it to get away. So he goes and he grabs the tail of the snake and it's halfway off and this snake is muscle. It does <laughs> not want to go back in the bag. It wants to get free. So it rears up and it nails Noel. 
right inside the thigh and he screams like i said you could hear us for two blocks around this day you could hear us about three blocks and he screams loudly and everybody's running to see what in the world's going on they always do that when there's a robber and there's gunshots and stuff they're running to see what's getting shot up and you know not me i'm like let me put something between me and the gunshots and so they're running to see what's going on and we've got you know a good sized crowd out there and the nurses come running too it's their turn so they say noel where did it bite you? And he's holding inside his leg and he's saying, right here. And, and they said, show us. No, he's embarrassed. <laughs> and, they, and so they finally get him a towel. He said, no, we can't help you if you don't show us. And that, I didn't realize how long the teeth are. They're, they're oh like about my. that long and they're designed so that it's a one way entry and they don't let go of their prey. They love eating their food. And so, and so my son had already pried it off, put it back in the bag. And, and so they put, they put methylate on mm -hmm. it. And, and then they went across and they got a tetanus shot for him. And nurses sometimes have a weird sense of humor. I think they actually ordered the <laughs> next size larger needle so he would feel it, kind of pay back for no, because they had this camaraderie and you know, whatever. And so as they give him the shot, you know, he's pain on top of insult, you know, kind of thing. The snake oh. bit him, he's getting this yeah. shot, and he doesn't like shots either. And Arlene's on one side, Noel's on the other, and, and Jonah Beth, I think, was um, whispered with Noel's head right between the two of them. He said, I hope he lives. <laughs> Noel was already worried. The snake wasn't poisonous, but he's not thinking of that at the moment. And he'll never forget that sermon. And so we do these kind of um, living dramas. No kid will ever, that was there will ever forget no, that one. No. And we average anywhere between four to 5,000 every week oh, in services. And you know, the it's kids so that are coming are the poorest of the poor. Mm. I, I remember one day this little girl comes in and, <laughs> and, and she's wearing, and this is on Sunday to go to church, she's wearing this shirt. <gasps> And, and if you look at this, I mean. I mean, it is holy. Yeah, Completely that's not righteous holy. or religious no, holy. holy. That's H-O-L-E <laughs> with a Y. Did you get a good shot? Did you get and a good, yeah, you, yeah. Any parent, any <sighs> loving parent, or adult that would see that yeah. would, would, would want to do just what we do. Uh -huh. I took that little girl by the hand and said, come here. And I took her over to our little kid's store and I, I gave the nod to the, the lady behind the stand and said, you give her an Uncle Daryl special. Aww. So she talked to the little girl said, if you give that t-shirt to Uncle Daryl, he'll give you a brand new one. Aww. And you know what I call these things? These are my trophies. Yeah. Some people have a rack on their wall and they say, look at my trophy. They may have mm. their gun mounted on it or whatever, but I say, look here. Wow. Because you know, people in America are, don't like religion. I see here a bad mouth in religion. We're not religious. We have a relationship, whatever they want to call it. But you know what? God has a religion. Yes. And God's religion is to feed, feed the hungry, the hungry. clothe the naked, mm -hmm. take care of the widows, widows and the orphans in their times of trouble. When you line up with what God wants you to do, it's not rocket science. Right. It's love in action. Yeah. And so I took her dirty old shirt and I said here take this new one <laughs> that's what God has done for me right. he said give me that dirty unrighteousness that you have had on you the lying the stealing the things that I used to do as a kid he said give it to me and any mistake I've made since he said give me that dirty old stuff and I will give you something new uh -huh. new clothes for old new clothes righteous clothes you may not visually see it but it is coming from God and it yes. clothes us. And, and then I have real. others, the oh. same thing. I've had kids come in in their shoes or just like this. <laughs> I mean, they got a holy again, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you just, and the problem over there is most of our kids, our poor kids have no bathrooms inside their house. Mm -hmm. And yet they still need to go to the bathroom. So it's outside. Mm -hmm. You got to watch where you walk. The ground and stuff will smell because of the smell of what's happening outside their their homes, and I mean, and so we can't when, even imagine it. No, can we? and they don't have any toilet paper either. That's, oh, poor. that's poor. They don't have a toothbrush, but we treat over 2,000 kids to free dental at Family Circus every mm. single year. As they come in to get their teeth fixed, they have to be at least five years old or mm -hmm. older, and uh, we give them a free toothbrush and a toothpaste afterwards. That toothbrush may be the only toothbrush in their family. So and they'll share it. Wow. Yeah. That's it's a luxury item. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, 
somebody would say, oh, that's dirty, you know, get rid of that thing. And, and, and hey, yeah, that shoe had a hole in it. When they walk on the ground, if they have a wound, step on a piece of glass or a mm -hmm. nail, then that dirty ground they're walking in has worms in it. Not necessarily just earthworms, but worms that are tapeworms and stuff that will grow and come into their, into their body, settle in their stomach, and um, we have to deal with that or they'll die. Wow. I had a little four-year-old girl, and I, and, I, and, I, and I have a picture of her in my pocket, and it's a small picture, so I really, it'd be tough to show everybody, but it's, I have two pictures. Mm. One, the picture of her was taken in February. And this picture of her in February, she looks like a cute little girl. Right. And then the picture four months later before she died at the age of four, she looks older. She does. Older, so much older. And I remember that during the last four hours of her, five hours of her life, my son and my wife and I were at her bedside. She had passed about eight pounds of worms the eight week before pounds. she died. And she was only like at 24, 25 pounds when she oh. died at the age of four years old. Christian Joy, what a beautiful young girl. She loved Jesus. She loved giving hugs. She knew Jesus. And um, during those last five hours, my son was helping us, and he was pumping on this plastic mm -hmm. like a ball. And it had to be done in time with the breathing. And as it was... <sighs> it's so beautiful. Breathe. in time for what she mm. needed to continue breathing <laughs> after four hours <coughs> we took a break it was it was lunchtime we took a break turned it over to one of the other family members and during that next few minutes while we were grabbing a sandwich she went to be with the Jesus mm -hmm. it's not right it shouldn't happen it didn't have to happen and for the children that are malnourished that come to us, of which we have now about 2,000 registered every wow. week. That you feed. We feed them a meal for every day of the week. Last year we gave 332,000 meals. That's a lot. This meals. year our plan and our goal, and we're on target to do it, we'll be feeding 300, I mean actually we'll be feeding half a million meals this half year. Half a million. Half a million. Do you know what God has done? Wow. And you think about it. I grew up here as a little kid Mm -hmm. with ADD in Idaho. I had no clue what God could do with me. Mm -hmm. And when I burnt the church down and said, God, <laughs> I'm sorry, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And he asked me to be a missionary yes. and I said, yes. <laughs> he took a young man with ADD and he never took the ADD away. I still am very, uh, I still have that issue. Mm -hmm. Emotionally or maturely, purity wise, I never really grew up. <laughs> So and you he, fit right in with those kids, Exactly. Right? <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, every week I'm ministering to four to 5,000 kids, <laughs> and they love Uncle Darrell, which is what they call me, all across mm -hmm. town. When I go to McDonald's over 300 times a year for breakfast, order my hotcakes, put my own peanut butter and chocolate <laughs> chips on, sometimes I look, at, I, mean, I look across the street, I look to see if my friends are there. There's 5,000 mm -hmm. children that live on the sidewalk or streets of our town. And if they see me coming into McDonald's, they'll come over and they'll wave to me. We'll call each other by name and they'll ask if they can get some food. And I'll go out and say, what do you want to eat? <laughs> and I'll take them out some food to eat. And those kids are growing up, many of them now, knowing Jesus Christ because somebody cares somebody enough to cares reach enough down to and pick them up. And with the family circus and all the things that are happening all the time, you capture their interests. And they, they it's not a boring come. place. I, no. <laughs> I, I, watch, I watch kids, okay, I watch kids come into church. And uh, I mean, we're talking about kids four, five, and six years old, and they're carrying their sibling, which may be a few week old baby, or a one year old baby, or one that's a, just barely over a year old, and it almost, it looks like they are almost matched size for size. And, and, and you ask him, why are you carrying a little baby brother? Where's mama? Oh, mama's back home. And she said that I could come to Family Circus if I brought my brother or I brought my sister with me. Oh. And they're so excited. They, they don't say, oh, but mama, I don't want to watch my baby brother. They do it because they know that that's the funnest place for them to be mm -hmm. in. And they get food there. Uh -huh. And we may not have told them, but if that little baby gets a stinky, yeah. You know, we'll give her a diaper to change uh -huh. the clothes. Or if the baby starts crying, we'll give her a, a bottle of milk. So you just minister in every way. 
to those people. Jesus said love. Uh, it's not about what mm -hmm. you can get. And this right. is a key here. God so loved, he what? He gave. He gave. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Some people say, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what God wants to do with my life. But you know, God created us for a very specific purpose. He designed us. And the first thing you have to learn to do is just simply love one another. That's mm -hmm. the number one commandment. Love each other. Do things out of an act of love. Right. So if the child is hungry, we've had kids come three days, no food. Wow. Three days, not one meal holding their stomach, and we go say, what's wrong? And then we serve them breakfast now, all the children, everyone oh. who comes to service gets served a hot breakfast as they come in, because we know it helps wow. them to be able to then think and to think, receive yeah. the Word of God. So and do you, how many meals do you feed them? We, we feed them a hot meal as they come, and then we send six meals home with them. Oh, my goodness. We also have the same thing we offer it for, for those that are pregnant. And we have mothers who are pregnant starting at the age of oh, 12. It must just 13, your heart. 14 years old, 16 years old. And their mothers, which now is the, grandchild, the grandmother of the child, right. will say, Uncle Daryl, Aunt Sandy, we have a, and I know what the next word's going to be. Uh -huh. We have a problem. And I say, no, don't say that. You have a life, a child growing in the, and Yes, there's issues you've got to deal with, how the child came to be and so forth. But that baby is already designed by God and has a future. It is not given to us to kill it's not a children. Right. Whether they're in the womb still, that does not make them a, mm -hmm. unknown. To God, He knows us while we're yet in the womb. Mm -hmm. While we get a chance to minister to that mother, young or old, to lead him to Christ. Well, what a blessing, Daryl. Thank you for sharing your heart and your life and the things you're doing. And if you would like to, your um, website is up on, on our screen, and we just would, if you'd like to have any, any, any questions answered or anything, mm -hmm. God will. They can contact they us. They can contact yeah. you. And I'll tell you what, God is the God mm -hmm. of, of new beginnings. Yes. And you had a new beginning, and yeah. your life continues yeah. to open up. Wow, what a blessing. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in again next week. We have another story, another testimony of God's grace, a mercy, a trophy of grace, a gal that, that uh, got completely away from God and got in, into the mob. Mm -hmm. And God changed her life, turned her around. And we're going to see that next week. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Don't miss next week. Goodbye.